Okay guys, welcome back. We're still working on this RLC combination circuit. What we've done so far is calculate the impedance and the current and the phase angle and whether the circuit leads or lags for all three circuits. And the only reason to calculate the impedance is so that I can calculate the currents. And the reason I need to calculate the angles is so that I can calculate the correct I total. Really, we're working on a parallel circuit here now, which is why I gotta add the current circuits or the currents together as phasers. Now, we're gonna calculate this vertical component and this horizontal component, guys. I'm gonna do it right here. Um, we'll do it right now, horizontal component. And if you recall from when we were doing adding phasers, the horizontal component is going to be phaser one, cosine its angle, phaser two, cosine its angle, plus phaser three, cosine its angle. And same with the vertical component, it is going to be phaser one, sine its angle, plus phaser two, sine its angle, plus phaser three, sine of its angle. Now, I'm not going to write it all down. I'm going to calculate it all at once here. Okay, so phaser one, 5.045 cos 75.96 plus 4.224 cos minus 66.04 plus 2.971 cos zero equals. All right, and so the horizontal component, this long line here is 5.910, okay? And the vertical component is exactly the same thing except for sine. So it is 5.045 sine 75.96 plus 4.224 sine minus 66.04 plus 2.971 sine zero equals. And it looks like my vertical component, guys, is 1.034, all right? And all that, so I can calculate I total, it's going to be equal to the square root of 5.910 squared plus 1.034 squared. I mean, there it is. It's that black right angle triangle right there. Um, let's try it out. 5.910 squared plus 1.034 squared equals root equals. Looks like it is 6 amps, okay? It is equal to 6 amps. Now, just for fun here, let's see if we figured any of this stuff out yet. And so far we have actually. This one's in there, 5.045, okay. This one's in here, 4.224 amps, okay. This one's in here, 2.971 amps. I total is calculated right there, guys. It's 6 amps. And the next thing we're going to calculate is the impedance. It is a parallel circuit now. And so the only way to calculate the impedance is with Ohm's law. All right. So how am I going to do it? It's going to be E over I. All right. And uh, E is 208 and I is 6. So it's going to be 208 over 6. Let's calculate that right now. 208 divided by 6 equals... 34.67 ohms. All right, guys? Oh, crazy, eh? Phase angle. I can see it right there, guys. Okay? Opposite over adjacent, inverse tan. There's my opposite. It's the vertical component. There's my adjacent. It's the horizontal component. Okay? So let's do that. Opposite over adjacent, 1.034 divided by 5.910 equals um, shift 10 equals, looks like it is 9 degrees, 9.92, 9.92 degrees. All right, guys. 
last thing we're going to calculate here, guys, is going to be whether this circuit is leading or lagging. What do you guys think? You know, put up your hand if you think it's lagging. Put up your hand if you think it's leading. Okay? Well, I'm telling you, I total is right here. It is the current that I have to identify. Once I've identified it, is it clockwise or counterclockwise? It is counterclockwise. That means that it is leading. All right, guys. And uh, since we're here now, guys, and we got a couple more minutes left in this video, I'm going to show you another method for calculating or figuring out the leading and lagging thing. It is what I call the NASCAR method. Okay, so you guys know about NASCAR. Okay, so everybody knows that NASCAR, everybody turns left all the time. Okay, so here's the finish line. Okay, and everybody's always turning left. Now, here's the phasers. Okay, here's the current phaser. Here's the voltage phaser. Okay, who's leading? Who's lagging, guys? The current is leading. All right, now let's go back to this one. Here's the finish line. Everybody's going left all the time, always turning left. Okay, who's leading? The current. Who's lagging? The voltage. This circuit leads. Let me see if I can figure out another one. This is another one from our series circuits that we were doing. NASCAR. Okay, now who's leading? The current is leading. The vol impedance or voltage is lagging, okay? But we're always talking about the current, guys. So who's leading? What's the current doing? He's leading. Here's another one from a parallel circuit that we did. What's the current doing? Leading or lagging? How come I've got lagging here? Did I make a big mistake on our parallel circuit, guys? This is showing the current leading. So I don't know what's going on with that. All right, I fixed it here. So, oh my goodness. Okay, don't worry about that. I'll have to fix that one. What's the current doing? NASCAR, finish line, he's lagging. What's the current doing? NASCAR, finish line, he's leading. All right, guys, so sorry about that parallel circuit there. Uh, that's the NASCAR method of figuring out the leading and lagging, guys. And uh, I don't know if that helps or makes it worse. Uh, I don't know what happened with my parallel circuit there, and I apologize for screwing that up. Uh, that was like a couple of videos ago, so I might have to do something about that. Uh, maybe I'll fix it in the video itself uh, with some text or something. All right. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. The homework, guys. Unit 2, handout 3B. And I know these are crazy, okay, guys? And you need to be super careful when you're doing these com combination circuits because I don't know if they're hard, but there's plenty of opportunity to make mistakes okay and students make mistakes all the time I mean you're calculating you're calculating a lot of things anything you do wrong you know that's gonna ruin it you know basically everything's gonna be wrong after that so be super careful when calculating you know these four things for every rung okay be super calculator careful when you're calculating your horizontal and vertical components um, be super careful with the rung that has the inductor in it. Remember that the angle that you calculate must be negative so that it's, you know, so the trig knows where it is. All right, guys. And, uh, yeah, just, just be really careful. Um, once you've done your combination circuits homework, guys, there's another handout, which is unit two, handout 3C. It's even more combination circuits if you want, you know, it's up to you. And then there's unit two handout four, guys, which 
you know, I highly recommend that you try because now that we've done series, parallel, and combination and practiced them all, it's really important that we practice them all again or get make sure we can do them and are able to switch from series to parallel to combination. And so unit two, handout four, and I know, I know it's a lot of homework, all right? And you don't have to do it all. I want you to have plenty of work to do if you want to do it or if you need to do it. And if this is super easy for you guys, you know, do as much as you need to do. But I would highly recommend that you try unit two, handout four. Make sure you can do some series circuits, some parallel circuits, and some combination circuits. Uh, all in one sitting okay and switch between them because with series circuits you had two options right you had impedance phasers and voltage phasers with parallel circuits you really only had one option and that was current phasers right and you wouldn't believe how many times I see a student try to do a parallel circuit and they're trying to use impedance phasers okay you can't do that okay and then with combination circuits, it's a bit of it's a bit of both. Okay, so unit two handout four will give you a really good practice at making sure you're good at all those things. Because the next thing we're going to learn, guys, is power and power factor correction, and you can't do any of that unless you can do series, parallel, and combination. All right, guys. So thanks for hanging in there with me uh, so far. All right, and well, hope you have a good day.